Have you ever stopped to reflect on whether, without realizing it, some of your daily routines are aligned with age-old warnings? Many of us, perhaps unknowingly, walk side by side with behaviors deeply rooted in the sins that the sacred texts strongly warn about. These sins, whose names we will reserve for a more detailed look in the course of this video, are often masked by habits that our contemporary culture normalizes or even values. This isn't just a video, it is an invitation to rethink your actions, awaken your consciousness, and align yourself with deeper and more enduring values. Together, we will explore these challenges, understand their impacts, and cultivate virtues that enrich their personal and spiritual growth. At the heart of human weaknesses, pride emerges as a brilliant but deceptive reflection of oneself. At Proverbs 16, 18, the Bible warns, Pride goes before destruction, and haughty spirit goes before a fall. This passage distills the essence of unbridled pride that often leads individuals to overestimate their capabilities, disregarding advice and warnings. In a modern world full of personal and professional achievements, it is common to observe pride disguised as self-confidence in environments where competition prevails, whether in the office or on social networks. Furthermore, in James 4, 6, we are reminded that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. The effects of this sin are not only internal, they reverberate through relationships deteriorated by arrogant attitudes and lack of empathy. It's a lesson seen both in stories of great leaders and in everyday life, where excessive pride can isolate the individual. Imagine, for example, a professional who, because he feels superior, never accepts feedback or considers new ideas. Over time, this attitude can erode valuable opportunities and relationships. Becoming aware of the risks of pride is essential for those who perceive these tendencies in themselves. A good exercise is the practice of active humility. This can include anything from asking for constructive feedback on your work to participating in groups or activities that emphasize collaboration and mutual learning. These actions are practical steps to combat pride and promote healthier, more sustainable personal and professional growth. It is a way to, as Psalm 25, 9 mentions, he guides the humble in righteousness and teaches the meek his way. Envy is a shadow that creeps silently into human interactions, eroding relationships and eroding well-being. Solomon warns at Proverbs 14.30, A quiet heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. This powerful metaphor reflects how envy destroys the being from the inside out, affecting not only mental health, but also physical health. In modern contexts, such as social media, envy manifests itself when we compare our lives to the filtered and idealized versions of other people, generating a cycle of dissatisfaction and resentment. Scripture also teaches us that envy can lead to more nefarious actions. In James 3.14, 16 we are warned, but if you have bitter envy and self-righteousness in your hearts, do not boast or lie against the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, animal, and diabolical. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is confusion and all manner of evil. The workplace is a palpable example where envy can distort judgment and drive destructive behaviors, such as sabotage or spreading gossip. To mitigate the effects of envy, it is recommended to cultivate gratitude and contentment with one's own achievements and circumstances. Engaging in practices such as keeping a gratitude journal or engaging in community activities can realign the individual's focus to the abundance present in their life, rather than fixating on what is lacking. These practices not only enrich the spirit, but also strengthen interpersonal relationships, building a more empathetic and united community. Anger, when left unchecked, can turn moments of tension into permanent scars in relationships and in one's own soul. In Ephesians 4, 26, 27, we find divine counsel. Be angry and do not sin. Let not the sun go down on your anger, neither give place to the devil. 
This biblical teaching underscores the importance of resolving conflicts quickly and constructively, preventing anger from taking root and causing greater damage. In everyday life, we see examples of this uncontrollable anger in heated discussions that often end in thoughtless decisions or even violence. The Bible also teaches us about the consequences of unbridled anger through the story of Cain and Abel, where anger led to an irreversible act. In congested traffic situations, a moment of anger can precipitate disproportionate reactions, highlighting how small triggers can release outbursts of anger if not well managed. Such outbursts not only exacerbate the original problem, but can also create new conflicts and lasting resentments. The practice of patience and assertive communication are essential tools for those who seek to control their anger. Techniques such as deep breathing, counting to 10 before responding in a tense situation, or even seeking professional advice can be effective measures for those who want to moderate their emotional responses. By adopting such practices, we reinforce our self-control and develop a more thoughtful approach to resolving conflicts, promoting a more peaceful and harmonious life. Avarice is a fire that consumes not only fortune, but also the soul. In 1 Timothy 6.10, we are warned that the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. This powerful biblical statement shows us that greed can lead to corrupt and destructive behaviors, leading the individual astray from the ethical and spiritual path. In modern societies, we see avarice manifested in financial scandals, where the relentless pursuit of more wealth compromises integrity and morals. In addition to being a poison for oneself, avarice also affects interpersonal relationships, as those who are driven by greed tend to value material goods more than human connections. Luke 12, 15 warns us, Take heed and flee from all covetousness, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the goods he possesses. This teaching is crucial in an era where consumerism often supplants more enduring and meaningful values. To counter avarice, it is recommended to practice active generosity, such as donating time, resources or skills to those in need. Such acts of generosity not only alleviate the effects of greed, but also enrich the spirit and strengthen the community. By choosing to live in a more altruistic and less materialistic way, we foster an environment of mutual support and respect, which is essential for a more just and balanced society. Mortal sins not only erode individual character, but also weave a web of social consequences that can destabilize entire communities. In Proverbs 29.16 we observe, When the wicked multiply, transgression increases, but the righteous will see his fall. This verse underscores the influence of collective misconduct on the moral health of a society. In contemporary terms, we see this in the ways in which anger and avarice incite corruption and violence, eroding public trust and the integrity of institutions. These sins create vicious cycles where envy and pride can lead to disputes and inequalities, negatively affecting social cohesion. Avarice, in particular, can result in policies that favor the rich and powerful over the common good, widening socio-economic gaps. The impact is tangible, fragmented communities where distrust and resentment become the default. To mitigate these consequences, it is vital to foster values of justice and equity. Initiatives that promote transparency, accountability and inclusion can rebuild social bonds and restore harmony. Community actions and inclusive policies are essential to reverse the corrosive effects of mortal sins, aiming for a more just and cohesive future. Redemption is a central message in the Bible, offering hope even to those who have fallen deeply into mortal sins. Luke 15, 7 celebrates this promise. I say to you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. This passage illustrates God's joy in genuine repentance, a process that not only purifies but also completely renews the individual. Biblical stories, such as that of Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul after a transformative encounter with Christ, demonstrate that no one is beyond redemption. In everyday life, regret can manifest itself when we recognize our faults and make a sincere effort to change our behaviors such as abandoning habits of uncontrolled anger or overcoming chronic laziness. 
Cultivating a practice of self-examination and confession can be very beneficial. Not only does this bring us closer to a fuller spiritual life, but it also improves our interpersonal relationships as we take responsibility for our actions and actively seek reparation. By embracing repentance and redemption, we pave the way for a more authentic existence that is aligned with high moral values. The theology of mortal sins is rich and complex, emphasizing the distinction between acts that lead to spiritual death and those considered less serious. John 5, 16, 17 gives us a perspective on this differentiation. If anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray, and God will give life to that brother. There is sin that leads to death. This teaching underlines the existence of venial sins, which, while harmful, do not completely separate the believer from God, in contrast to mortal sins that have the potential to do just that. This doctrine is not just a matter of error classification. It serves to guide the faithful about the gravity of their actions and their spiritual consequences. In everyday life, this understanding helps individuals to appreciate the seriousness of their failures and to seek correction and spiritual growth in a proportionate manner. Awareness and understanding of these nuances are vital to a life of conscious and responsible faith. Theology offers not only rules, but also paths to recovery and spiritual strengthening. By deeply exploring and understanding mortal sins, believers can strive to avoid these failures and foster a community of mutual support and guidance. Mortal sins transcend sacred texts, strongly influencing popular culture. Films, books and artwork often explore themes of pride, envy, anger, laziness and avarice, depicting not only the consequences of these addictions, but also the character's journeys of confrontation and redemption. A striking example is the movie Seven, where each sin is personified and leads to tragic outcomes, reflecting on human nature and its flaws. In addition to entertainment, these depictions help to shape our understanding of mortal sins, making them more accessible and debatable in the modern context. This allows people to see the manifestations of these sins in their own lives and in the surrounding societies, encouraging reflections on morality and personal ethics. The influence of mortal sins on popular culture also serves as a mirror of contemporary concerns and values. As we see these sins portrayed in varied contexts, we can reflect on how to avoid them or mitigate their effects on our lives, promoting a broader dialogue about virtues and morality in our society. Prevention against mortal sins begins with awareness and continuous self-evaluation. The Bible encourages us to be ever on the watch, as highlighted at 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober and watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. This verse underlines the need to be constantly alert to temptations that can lead to mortal sins, suggesting a posture of prudence and discernment. To effectively avoid these sins, it is crucial to develop opposing virtues through spiritual and moral practices. For example, against pride, we cultivate humility, against envy, gratitude, against anger, patience, against laziness, diligence, and against avarice, generosity. These virtues not only protect us from sin, but they also enrich our lives and strengthen our relationships. In addition, continued education and dialogue on these topics in communities, families, and study groups can raise awareness of sins and their subtleties. Sharing experiences and strategies for overcoming temptations can create an environment of mutual support, which is essential for collective spiritual and moral growth. We have reached the end of our exploratory journey through the paths less traveled of mortal sins. Now that you know these subtle trends that may be quietly shaping your actions, what will you do next? Can you identify these behaviors in your life? And more importantly, how can you turn that knowledge into positive actions that promote your personal and spiritual growth? We encourage you to reflect on these questions and share your experiences and strategies for overcoming these challenges. Leave your comment below. What sins have you found you are most likely to commit and how do you plan to fight them? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to continue learning and growing with us. Every step you take towards self-understanding and transformation 
is a step toward a fuller, more meaningful life. Together, we can build a community of mutual support and growth. So, what will be your next step on this journey?